You're probably like, what the heck is going on here, huh? Yeah, what's going on here? What's, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> well, today is going to be the most important stream I've ever done, first of all. Wow. And I want to say thank That's you great. for doing this, seriously. Thank you. Yeah. Um, get some good ratings today. We're right? going to get some good ratings. Huh? <laughs> Everyone thought this was going to be fake today, but, uh, you know, we proved them wrong. So. Well, you know, right in the living room of Mar-a-Lago, <laughs> which I don't allow this to be ever done. So you're, the, you're the first, just about. Thank you. And uh, we'll have a little fun today. And my son, Baron, says hello. He's a great young guy, but he's a big fan of yours. What's up, Baron? Yeah, Baron, Baron's awesome. He's a great yeah. kid. Amazing. He's tall. Okay. Very tall. He's tall. Good, good student. Yeah. yeah good he's boy. very smart. I'll tell you that. Yeah, he is. I do want to first off, you know, say this. Um, you know, everyone in the chat, everyone in this room, everyone loves you. And um, I just want to say you're, you're a true hero for this country, and, oh, I, and I really appreciate you. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm again, I'm really thrilled we could well, do this today. I'm so happy now that I'm doing it. <laughs> give, me, give me a hand. That's great. I, um, I, do you, do you, so do you know what live streaming is on these platforms? More or like, less, yeah. yeah. More or less. I'm it's gonna, the new wave. It's the new wave. It's the new wave. I'm going to explain it to you, all right? Okay. So I'm going to show you this, this chat right now. Let me, let me show you this. So this is the live chat. Right. So you already broke the website in five minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. you broke it. The chat wasn't working, um, but we ended up fixing it. It's just very slow. Everyone in the chat say hello. You guys can put hi in the chat. And yeah. W's mean it's good. W means That's win. Good. Yeah. Good. Yep, so they're, uh, they're putting W's and stuff. Yep, W Trump, all right. So, yeah, everyone everyone is just super thrilled. Oh, you're going to have big ratings today, I can see it. Yeah, I want to I want to break a million. I think we could do it. Oh, good. Oh, you're too much of one. You think so? I think so, yeah. Oh, I'm excited. I'm thrilled. Elon uh, Elon actually already, uh, he commented on uh, the uh, the X post that I went live already. Well, Elon is a great guy. Yeah, he's great. He's really a fantastic person. Little imagination he's got, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rockets and tunnels and yeah. everything. He's, uh, he's a fantastic guy. He's great. So uh, let's get started today. Let's okay. have some fun. Let's go. We'll touch base on some topics, okay. and then we'll do some fun stuff. Sounds good. Cool? Let's, let's have go. a good time. All right, well, the first thing is, you know, the reason why you know I, I really wanted to make this stream happen is because there's a lot of people that are first-time voters watching today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I want to make it very clear to everybody that you're a human being. You're a great human being. Um, and um, I want you to basically talk to talk in this camera, talk to them, and, and explain why it's very important as a first-time voter to go out and vote, and why they should vote for you. Uh, I'd love to do that, and I love having a young audience. This is young. I think you have a, some oldsters too, because I also know some oldsters that are listening and watching. But uh, <laughs> it's about the American dream. Right now, you don't have the American dream. We have a, co a country that's not respected, a country that's being laughed at, a country that just a little while ago we're having a stock market explosion in a negative way as opposed to a positive way. And that's been happening for quite a while. It's, uh, it's been simmering and really happening for quite a while. And we're going to make this uh, country so strong and so great. And when you're ready for your job, you're going to get a great job, a job so you can make the kind of money this guy's making, maybe even, <laughs> maybe even more if that's possible. Right? I'm trying to get like you, boss. But, uh, but you'll, you'll love your life and you'll be successful. And at a young age, it's really wonderful to think about the American dream. And with uh, Kamala and you know, Joe, I took him out. He was, uh, we had a debate, and the debate didn't go so well for him. And he, they sort of, what they did, you know, it was really a coup of somebody. He yeah. had 14 million votes, he had it. And all of a sudden, they went to him and they said, we don't want you, as, we don't want you running anymore. And it's sort of like a prize fight from my standpoint. Here you're, you're focused on this one man, right. and all of a sudden, you're fighting somebody else. But she's actually worse than he is. And you're starting to see that. I think people are going to see that very, it's going to be very evident. So uh, go out. We want the American dream. We're going to give you the American dream, and uh, you're going to be real happy. Thank you. Uh, I have another question. And again, Mr. President, you know, I'm not really fully into politics, but, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. And I, I do want to make this very clear as well, Now it's on my mind. You know, back when I was in, uh, I went to high school in California, okay? Right. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, uh, the teachers uh, were basically at the time, you know, this is, this is your first term. They were telling me how horrible of a person you are and all these things. And the teachers, you're not supposed to do that. It's inappropriate to have teachers, you know, discuss politics in school. But it's becoming really normal for a lot of teachers. Uh, you know, and you're a kid. You, you know, when you're a kid, your, your brain is like a sponge. That's true. That's true. So um, I want to know what your thoughts on that, you know, kind of the corruption in the school system in a way. You know, they're teaching some pretty bad stuff in there. It's been brainwashed to a certain extent. Even the teachers have been brainwashed. They've learned from a long time. This is long before me this liberal way, or now they call it progressive. They don't like the term liberal. You're not allowed to use that anymore, so wow. I usually use it. But uh, this, this liberal way that they have, and it's a bad thing, a bad thing for the country. You know, 
we want to have borders. We want to have low taxes. We want to have great schools, really, you know, great schools, so you can go and learn and be successful and have a wonderful life and all of that. But we want to have a good military so we can protect ourselves. Of course. From some bad players. You've got some bad players out there. And, you know, it's interesting. During my four years, we had no war. Other than we, we had nothing. Everybody was afraid we were going to have wars. And just the opposite. North Korea, uh, I remember Barack Obama was telling me, oh, the biggest problem we have is North Korea. I didn't have a problem with North Korea. No. Big nuclear presence. I didn't have a problem. Uh, the only war we had was already started long ago, and that was ISIS. And we defeated, I defeated them in a very short amount of time. I remember. Very quickly. And we had no wars under the Trump administration. And that's a great thing. You know, that's a really great thing. It was, I think, 82 years since that's happened. And we won't have wars again, but we could have a war before we even get there. That's the problem. We have a number of months. We have four months, and uh, the election's starting very soon. And I guess five months before you actually get in. And a lot of damage can be done in five months by incompetent people. And we have very incompetent people right now. And I'm not saying that out of happiness. I'm saying that out of sadness, because our country's in tremendous danger, not only of, of stock market crashes or depressions or whatever it may be. It's a, a tremendous military danger. We have yeah. Israel's blowing up. The Middle East is blowing up. Russia's going wild with Ukraine. And things are out of control, and we have nobody that knows how to talk. We have nobody that knows. I was watching when Russia was thinking about going in, and they never would have done it with me. They never, and they didn't. But they never, after I got in, they started loading up the border. I thought he was doing it for negotiation purposes. And Biden said all of the wrong things, everything wrong. And ultimately, they attacked, and they wouldn't have done that if I were president. So we got to get back in and get it straight now. We'll get that one worked out. One hundred percent. A lot of people dying. Yeah, it's it's a lot of innocent lives being lost. You know, you you had mentioned, um, you know, the stock market crashing. I don't know if you you obviously I saw the the, the post you made on uh, your app Truth. You know what I just saw yesterday and the day before. You know, I'm in crypto and I'm right. in stocks myself, right. and I couldn't believe what's going on. You know, you have Japan, you have everybody just falling. And um, I want to ask you, you know, how do we basically get it back up and flowing and back up and running? And, um, you know, and what's causing this? Well, right now you have no confidence. You have somebody that now is taking over from Biden because uh, he just wants to stay in bed all day. He can't get up. He wants to stay in bed. He would know it was a fraud. They tried to tell people he was competent. He knew what he was doing. And in the debate, he was uh, a judge to be not so good. Yeah. But uh, you can go back four years, too. You know, he campaigned from his basement. He didn't campaign. I said, where is this guy doing COVID? They used COVID as an excuse not to let him talk. Yeah. The whole thing was a fraud, and everybody knew it, and they knew it strongly. And uh, we're going to get it going again. We have to get it going again. It's, uh, they put us in a very bad position. The worst thing is we have probably, I think, 8 and 20 million people came into our country uh, with open borders. And Many come from prisons. And, and you can be a liberal, and your people can be. But coming from some of the meanest prisons all over the world, not just South America, from all over the world, from the Congo and Africa, they come. From all over the world, they're coming. And they're releasing their prisoners into the United States. Now, you can be a liberal guy. You can be progressive as, as anybody in the world. And you can't think that's a positive thing. No. They're coming out of mental institutions. They're pouring into the United States. And they're hurting and damaging our country, and they're killing our people. And the crime rate with, with what you're talking about and what we're talking about, the, we call it migrant crime. It's a new form of crime, and it's a very violent crime. And it's uh, going to take on proportions the likes of which this country has never seen before. And remember, these people are just getting accustomed. These are people coming out of mental institutions, prisons and jails, and many terrorists. We're having record numbers of terrorists coming in. So I'm talking, I assume, mostly to a young audience. But a young audience, no matter where they're coming from, they can't be happy about this. No. No, they can't. Uh, jobs are being taken. A lot yeah, of crime. Sure. Fix that issue. How, what if, what if uh, you know, I happen to be born in another country and I want to come the right way? Uh, how, how, would, uh, how would that work? Well, that's what we want. We want people to come in, but they have to come in through a system, through a legal system. And, you know, one of the things that's unfair is we have hundreds of thousands of people that have applied to come in, and this administration doesn't talk to them. Right. But if they walk through the southern border, they have no problem getting in. I right. don't even know why they're doing this, but some people are waiting 10 years to come in, and they've studied. They learned all about the United States, about our Constitution, about everything. And right. uh, they're, not let in, they're not being let in. And 
We're allowing people to come in from really rough places, really bad places. And they come in through caravans. And, you know, these caravans have 10, 20, 30,000 people. Wow. And they're pouring through Mexico. That's crazy. And Mexico was great when I was there. They were helping us. I had stay in Mexico. You can imagine what that is. That means you have to stay in Mexico. You can't come into this country until we approve you. They gave it up. Now they just walk right in. Wow. They had catch and release. We had catch and release. That's you catch a criminal and you release him into our country. I said, no, no. We catch a criminal and we release him into Mexico. I think you feel better about that. <laughs> yeah, so, definitely. You know, it's one of those things. There's so many things. They are so bad. It's like amateur night. It's either amateur night or they want to destroy our country. Right, right. Do you, uh, do, what, do you, what do you think about what's going on in Venezuela, uh, the whole situation out, out there? Well, I know it very well. And Venezuela is right now uh, being run by a dictator. We're, we were enemies with Venezuela. Venezuela was going to collapse, and people could have gone back to Venezuela. They're in our country now. Uh, they've released tremendous numbers of criminals into our country. If you look at Caracas, it was known for being a very dangerous city, and now it's very safe. In fact, the next interview we'll do, we'll do it in Caracas, Venezuela, because it's I'm safer down. than many of our cities after they've released their criminals into all of our cities. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I'm kidding. I know. You know, the reason I have to say that, because the fake news media knows that too, but they'll say, he suggested they go to Venezuela. You know, they are so bad, it's hard to believe. But anyway, so Venezuela, their crime is down 72% because they've taken their criminal elements, which are large, very, it was a very dangerous place, especially Caracas and the different cities, and they've moved them into the United States of America. I know you're very happy. I know that your mother and father must be thrilled when they hear that. Yeah. Who happen to be here, I believe. They are. Right? They're right over there. Hey, Mommy, oh. Dad. Are you thrilled with what they're doing? I don't think so. No, <laughs> no. I don't think they're thrilled. I don't think so. <laughs> so, but, so their crime rate is down 72%. Right. Because they're drug dealers, uh, they're criminals, they're murderers, they're rapists. Everything's being moved into the United States. And soon they will have moved all of their criminals into the U.S. They won't have crime. So that's why I say we'll go to Venezuela for our next interview. Okay. <laughs> it's a very serious problem. I mean, honestly, what they're doing to this country, they're destroying our country, Aiden. They're destroying stupid people. He's, a, he's not a smart man. He wasn't smart 35 years ago. He wasn't smart 20 years ago. And now he's really not smart. No. And you saw that from the debate. <laughs> I mean, he's really gone down the tubes. And she is, look, she couldn't even pass her law exam. She couldn't pass her bar yep. exam. And I'm not saying that because I know other people didn't pass their bar exam, but she thought she'd never be able to pass it. And uh, this is who we have running our country. It's a shame. She's ultra left, ultra radical. I just see where 99 vicious terrorists, when she was, I guess, attorney general, she, because she was attorney general in California, she destroyed California. Her policies have destroyed California. Her policies, when she was the district attorney, have destroyed San Francisco. San yep. Francisco was the best city in our country 20 years ago. And now it's, uh, you know, not even, frankly, it's not even livable. Uh, we have to bring our cities back. We're going to have to focus on bringing our cities back. It's, it's, it's actually really sad. You know, I live, I live in California for a long time. Even uh, Los Angeles, it's, it's, it's not safe. It's just, it's not safe. Everyone I know that lives in multi-million dollar, you know, homes that do what I do, you know, content, they're getting robbed. You know, they're getting robbed. The, the police don't really, you know, uh, oh. they're, not, they're not active out there as, the, as they are in some other states. And it's really sad. And I agree. I saw a video in San Francisco where people just walk into a, a, a Louis Vuitton in an Apple store and just loot, 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 and leave like nothing ever happened. It's crazy. They loot. And not only that, they have like $1,000 or $1,500, which she started, where she won't even prosecute if it's less than 1500 bucks. Wow. So you see these people go in with like calculators and they're adding the stuff that they're stealing <laughs> because they won't be prosecuted. So that if they get dabbed, they say, no, no, it's less than whatever it is, $1,000. Right. And she started the concept of that and it's now spreading. Our country, we need, we need strong leadership. Our, we didn't have stuff like this. You know, when you look at what's happened to this country and you look at other countries, Crime rates all over the world are down. You know why? Because they're all dumping their bad people, their prisoners and all of the people that are bad. They're not only, I mean, not only the people on the streets, the people that are in jails. You know what they save by doing that? But they're dumping their prisoners and their criminal elements. They're dumping them into the United States of America. And our crime is going to go through the roof. Crazy. It's going to go through the roof. And, uh, you know, 
if we win, and I hope we win, I, we should win, uh, we seem to be winning, and, you know, you can't even imagine that anybody would want these. This has nothing to do with me. Who would want these people? But can you imagine? Uh, they're just getting comfortable now, and they're criminals. So they're sort of laying low a little bit now because they're not comfortable. But soon they'll be comfortable, and they'll find that our police are — they're great. Yeah. But they're not allowed to do their job. They're not allowed to be strong, and they're not — they could do their job if they will. But if they do their job, uh, they have their pension knocked out. They have their car taken away, their family taken away, their house taken away. Everything's taken away, and they lose their job. It's a very uh, rough thing being a policeman today, I'll tell you. But they could do the job. We're going to have to let them do their job. We have a crime-infested nation. We're a drug-addicted nation, and we're a crime-infested nation. Other than that, we're doing quite well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I want to uh, move topics a little bit here. You know, I, I saw, um, I I'm unfamiliar with exactly what it was called. You were speaking on stage uh, with three other uh, yeah. women, and you just got ambushed. They were late, and not a hi, hello, how are you? Just straight into it, just straight trying to rip you apart. And I think you handled it pretty well, but uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Like, wh why do you think, like, they just straight up do that for you, but then they're going to ask the other side, oh, what's oh, your favorite flavor sure. of ice cream? That's right. Well, no. well, I did this as a favor. This was the black journalists. Uh, the room had maybe 2,000. They said 2,000. It looked more like 1,000 to me, but whatever it was, it was packed. Yeah. And I did it because I thought it was a good thing to do, and they had a uh, journalist. I don't know. I didn't know who she was, but she was nasty. She was a terrible person. And I walk in, and instead of saying, Hello, thank you very much for doing this. They also said, Kamala is going to do it. But then Kamala said, I want to, she wants to do it because she can't talk to people. She can't answer questions. She hasn't done one interview. You know, she's not doing any interviews. Yeah. Because she, if she did one interview where a hard question is asked, she's incapable of answering it. But I walk in and this woman starts talking about, uh, she talked about, we have, let's get rid of the elephant in the room. And she starts talking about racism and everything. I said, you didn't even say hello to me. And I'm doing them a favor by doing right. this. I'm doing this out of respect to the black community. And we're getting record numbers, as you know, in the black community. And she came across, you know, she's with ABC Fake News, which is one of the worst. ABC is one of the worst. Right. And she is horrible. So she was very nasty. Uh, Harris Faulkner was there. She was excellent. The other person I didn't know, she was okay. I wouldn't say she was great, but she was okay. But I did it. And it was quite a sensation. I see a lot of people think it was uh, well handled. The woman was so rude so rude that you know it's hard to believe you can walk into a thing and i do them a favor and i do this most people said why are you doing it i feel i have an obligation to do it i want to look with it. you become the president for all of the people right. not for a certain segment Correct. not even for just my you know they talk about my base it's a very big base but you become president for all of the people so i feel you have an obligation to do that now she's not doing anything she's not doing any interviews because I don't believe she's capable. She starts, I don't know, she's strange. The whole thing is strange. Let's put it this way. Our country's in big trouble. Yeah. I spoke to uh, your son, Don Jr., uh, when I met you in Doral. Right. Um, I spoke to Don Jr. a little bit. He said, man, I, you know, I feel for the, you know, the young generation. You guys are, look, look, look at this. Like, look what's going on here. Like, it's, it's like you need these next four years. If not, I don't, he's like, I don't know how well the country's going to do after these four years. Um, I don't think it survives. I really don't. Damn. Look, we're going to have 20 million people in by the time this election takes place. 20 million people. That's, <laughs> that's bigger than New York State. Uh, many of those people are people that you should not have, and, and we're all for everything. You know, every, all men are created equal, as the expression goes. Right? Of course. But now today they say all men and women are yeah. created equal. When yeah. they wrote that, it was a slightly different time. Today, it's a, that alone is a politically incorrect yeah. statement. Yeah, it right? is. So all men and <laughs> women is. are created equal, everything. <laughs> but the fact is, uh, when you're dumping all of these criminals and all of these uh, drug dealers, uh, all of these people into our country, you're really hurting our country badly. And it, it has to be, uh, we have to take very strong measures. We definitely do. We definitely do. Um, moving move to the, the next. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I didn't know they were allowed to applaud. That's yeah, they're allowed to applaud. You guys can keep applauding. Yeah, right. <laughs> common sense, right? <laughs> you know, it is about common sense. I mentioned that term because whether you're conservative, liberal, it's, 
It's all about common sense. It is. You want to have good education. You want to have borders. You want to have low interest rates, be able to buy a house. You want to, you know, so many different things. But you got to have common sense. And, and we're run by people. And, you know, just a little thing. When I started campaigning almost like eight years ago, I talked about Merry Christmas. We should have Merry Christmas again. Let's bring back Merry Christmas. It's a, you weren't allowed to say Merry Christmas. I got it back. Yeah. But, It's a nice crowd, huh? Even if you're <laughs> Jewish, they like to say Merry Christmas. Every one of my Jewish friends say, we love Merry Christmas. I love, I'm, I'm Jewish. I, I love Merry good. Christmas. Good. And, you know, Kamala doesn't. Uh, Kamala, she doesn't like no, it. She doesn't, want, she doesn't want you to use Merry Christmas. Wow. She thinks it's uh, insulting to use Merry Christmas. So we'll have to work on her. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Speaking of, you said something about common sense. Someone who has no common yeah. sense, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, do you think he was pushed out or do you think he made the decision to step down. No, he was uh, not only pushed out, it was a coup. I'm telling you, they went in to see him. He did badly. The debate was a disaster. It was horrible. Okay. Um, I don't know if I was brilliant or if he was horrible. <laughs> Maybe it was a combination of both. Yeah. Okay? yeah. I know one thing they were saying after I left, they said, uh, you know, that was one of the greatest debate performances we've ever seen. And then two days later, they just said he was terrible. Right. You know, they never gave. They right. took away. They took away the great debate performance. Stuff. Yeah. But anyway, but no, I, I mean, I did fine. And he, he is. Uh, he shouldn't have. Look, he's done tremendous damage to our country. He was a terrible president. He was the worst president we've ever had. She's, by the way, considered the the most unpopular vice president we've ever had. But she's a horrible. She's worse than he is. I actually think he's smarter than her, and I think he's a really not smart person. But I think he's smarter than she is. That's but she lot. was convenient. She was there. Uh, they have better people. I mean, they have much better people. In fact, all of the people that she's looking at are considered much better than her. These were people that were thinking about running. They would have run, except that they didn't want to go through this roadblock with her. And, you know, because you're the vice president. So they wanted to go pick them. And, and I think virtually every one of them is considered better, smarter, uh, would be a better president than her. But we can't allow her to be president. She's going to destroy our country. She'll ruin it. I mean, already, the, uh, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous what she's saying. Um, I, and, you know, and by the way, the youth is so important because youth tends to be Democrat, and as they get older, they become Republican. <laughs> we can't wait 50 years. We can't. Make the move now. <laughs> All of you young people, and he's got a lot of them. All I know is my kids say, Dad, you have no idea how big this interview is. I said, don't tell me that. But uh, <laughs> make the move now. Don't wait 50 years. Our country doesn't have 50 years.